Right, so I want to start by congratulating those who did well on their online assessment. And for those who didn't do well, don't lose hope. Ask anything, I'll be there to help you so that you can pass this module. So your next assessment is a take home test. Right, of which at least that one you have an opportunity to practice and you have the whole day to do it. But the key thing to this take home test is these topics that we are doing now, the hypothesis testing. Right, and previously we discussed on how you deal with hypothesis testing and we did for a single mean and a single proportion. So today we will be dealing with double. So before we go to double, we do a recap of a single mean and single proportion so that we can see that we are on the same page. Right, okay. Right. Right, if I ask a question, then you should answer as quickly as possible so that we save time. This is likely to be one of our longest classes that you are going to have today because I'm only going to let you go once I'm done explaining everything. So basically we are done with number five, confidence interval. And these items were there in your test, confidence interval online assessment. And I saw that some of you never touched the book, never did anything on this topic. And basically it wasn't asking for any interval, it was either asking for the lower limit or the upper limit, the lower limit and the upper limit, the values, that's it. And I told you we only use these formulas for confidence intervals for now, that's it. Then last week we also touched on hypothesis testing and we did this one, this one and this one. This one is when your n is greater or equal to 40. And this is when your n is less than 40. And we use the proportion whenever you don't have a standard deviation, when you don't have a mean. That's when we use the proportion. That's what we discussed, one, two, three. And I told you there are four steps that we have to do when we do hypothesis test. So for now, I'm going to do a recap, right, on these one, two, three formulas that we have covered. Then today, we are going to cover the next one, two, three formulas. These are the formulas that we are going to cover, right? One, two, and three formulas. That's what we are going to cover now. Anyway, let's start let's start sorry, yes um, so regarding the the test that we just had last week now um so i think another problem was that um people people got like some other people's tests were actually like easier than the others so i feel like that was also like a factor it wasn't like fair in like every level of like maybe difficulty or whatnot okay i i reviewed all the papers then I saw that all the questions were the same, except changing a little bit. For example, you would do at 90% confidence level, someone would do it 95. I checked them. The only question I think that was a bit difficult, it's only one. The rest, there was nothing, everything was the same. And unfortunately, the sim selects randomly any question. So I'm not sure, and if I was the module leader, I could have adjusted that, but I'm not. So it's up to those who are setting those tests. But from what I saw, basically it wasn't that hard. Anyway, I'll do a video on corrections so that you can also see where you did it wrong and where you did it, it right or something like that. Okay. So I'll prepare a video as well, then I'll upload it. I think by tomorrow the video will be there. I'll do all the corrections, but I cannot do all questions because there are so many. They were different for each individual in most cases. So I'll just randomly select two or three papers, then I'll do the corrections, do a video, upload them so that we can be on the same page. 
right? But if you had just gone through those activities that I always give you and you read the slides that I uploaded, you were supposed to pass. OK, <clears throat> right. OK, without wasting much time now, let's go to today's topics. Right, so I said I'm going to start with the recap on point number six so that when we do these formulas one, two and three, there won't be any problems. Right, so just a recap. We defined that there are steps. What is the first step? Step number one, when we do hypothesis test. Let's be quick. Right, the first step is to do what? <clears throat> you find H1 and H0. Correct. We call it, you define your <coughs> now and alternative H0 and H1. Right? You define your now and alternative. And what do we say about H0? It only takes equal signs. And this one takes the opposite of that still remember that right that was step one what about step two you define your area of acceptance and rejection right and there are three types of tests what is the first type of test right two-sided there is two-sided, correct, right? So this is your area of acceptance and this is your area of rejection, right? And what determines it to be a two-sided? Which sign tells you this is a two-sided? Which sign? tells you that this is a two-sided. Equals, yeah. equals two. Correct. Then <clears throat> another one, we have one-sided upper-tailed, right? So this is your area of acceptance and this is your area of rejection. And which signs tells you this is an upper-tailed? Better than greater than correct. Then we got the last one, the lower tailed, right? This is your area of acceptance and this is your area of rejection. And which sign? The less than sign. <clears throat> that was step two. Then you go to step three. Step three is calculation. Then step four, you give a conclusion. Right, so if you still remember this, let's do this question here. Right, I'm going to do this question. There is a question there, right? Okay, let's do this question. <clears throat> then we do the double. Right, let's start with step one. Let me use white color. Right, it says the South African Revenue Service SARS believes that it takes typically salary earning taxpayers less than 45 minutes on average to complete their tax return using e-filing. To test this claim, SARS randomly selects how many? 12. It's just a recap. Salary earning taxpayers who had registered e-filing and recorded their time to complete the e-filing process. The symbol mean time for the 12 taxpayers is 41.5 with the symbol standard deviation 9.04 minutes. Test at five level on significance where the SARS claim is likely to be true. Follow the steps outlined. Step the hypothesis. So step one, we need to define our H0 and H1. Right, so I'll randomly pick. Right, who is going to answer this? Okay, let's start with uh, who is this? Koliswa. Define your now and alternative. We should take at least maybe 10 minutes, then we do the double. 
Right, what's your now and alternative? Okay, anyone? Anyone? Um, H1. Yes. Um, will be less than 45 minutes. Correct, less than 45 minutes. And H0 will be less than an equal to, oh, it'll be, no, it will be greater than an equal to 45. Correct, and where is the claim? Where is your claim? Uh, it's H1. This is your claim, it's on H1. Simple as that. Let's go to step two. Right, let's define our area of acceptance and rejection. What type of a test is this? Lower tells. It's what? Lower tells. One sided. Right, lower tailed, one sided. So to, I draw this so that it will be easy for you to see visually. It says less than. So this is lower tailed. Right, then the critical value you are given 1.796 and it's on the lower side, so it's negative. So define your area of acceptance and rejection. You accept H0 if, in this case we have 12, so it's T. If T calculated is above negative 1.796, and we reject. Sir? Yes? Sir, your screen is moving too slow. I don't know what the problem is. For everyone, is it? Is that so? No, sir. Yes, sir. No. I'm hearing yes, no. I'm not sure. No, sir. No. It's, fine. it's fine. Okay, let me reshare the screen. And if you experience that, you maybe you need to log in, just go off and come in back again. Right. All right. Okay, let me type and see if it is still happening. Right. Can you all see the screen? I've reshared it. Yes, sir. It's fine. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Then the T calculated. So we accept H0 if the T calculated is above. And we reject if the T calculated is below negative 1.796. That's step two, right? Then let's go to step three. Is the calculation. That's step three. Right, and we are calculating hypothesis test using T. Why do we use T? Because our N is less than 40. So we use the T formula because it is less than 40. There you go, right? A symbol is 12, it's less than 40. So we use the T formula. Then we need to substitute. So for you to substitute, you need to know your X bar. What is your mean? You were told that the sample mean for 12 is 41.5. That's your mean. And your mu, this is your mu, it's 45. And your standard deviation, you were told, it's 9.04. And your N, you were told, what is your N? Number of people, is, your N is 12. Right, then we come here, we solve for T. So our T that we are now calculating, X bar 41.5 minus 45 over standard deviation 9.04 over root of 12. Let's solve that 41.5 minus 45. Right, we get negative 3.5 over I will just simplify 9.04 divided by root of 12. I'm getting 2.6096. I'm just the negative 3.5 divided by 
then I get negative 1.341 if we leave it to three decimal places. Right, that's the calculation for T. Then we go to our graph. Where does this number lie? Does it lie below or above Providence? I want to check if you got it last time. Negative 1.341, does it lie above or below negative 1.796? We are on step four. Right, Providence, any idea? Uh, it lies, I think it lies above. Correct, it lies above because negative 1.7 is somewhere here. Negative 1.3, it's somewhere, it's above. So we accept h0 because the t calculated is above negative 1.796 so it automatically means that if we accept h0 we have accepted h0 it means we need to reject h1 so reject h1 because we have accepted H0. So it means we reject H1. And on H1, there, that's where the claim is. So if we reject H1, it means what? The claim is false. Then I'll just add something that you need to do. Just say the claim is false at 5% significant level. You just tell us because you are testing at 5%. So you reject H1 because you've accepted H0. So accepting H0, it automatically means you have to reject H1. And on H1, that's where the claim is. So it means the claim is false. At which level? 5% significant level. Then you are done. You have already made. So we did step one, step two, step three, step four. That's it. Then you can get all your marks. That was nine marks in total. Easy nine marks. Then you say QT is difficult. There is nothing difficult here, right? This was for T tests, right? And you see how it changes when we do the double. So I just want you to know what we have covered so far, right? Then there is another one. There it is, question four, right? I'll pick someone to help us on this question. Right, uh, we have Delsa. Okay, Delsa and Emmanuel, you're going to help us on this one. <laughs> right, it says a mobile phone service provider, CLD Mobile, claims that it is 15% of the prepaid mobile phone market. They claim that they have that. A competitor who commissioned a market research Kanban to conduct a survey amongst the prepaid mobile phone users challenge this claim. He's saying, no, we need to prove that you have 15% market share, right? So this Kanban, they took a sample of 360 prepaid mobile users and found that 42 users are subscribed. They subscribe to CLD. The mobile, right, mobile is a service provider. Follow the steps outlined here to perform a test at 1% level of significance on the claim made by cell D that they own 15%. That's their claim that they own, right? So let's define, let's go to step one, H0 and H1, right? The first of all, what you need to discover, have you seen anything to do with standard deviation here in the question? Did you see anything to do with mean in this question? There is no mean in this question. You don't have any mean. You don't have any standard deviation. So once you don't see these kind of things, it means you are dealing with what? Proportion. And when we deal with proportion, now we use a pi. I told you about this, right? So who is going to help us here to save time? 
let's just solve it quickly. Anyone who wants to try? Is it Andrea Chetty? Can you help us? Define so I now. think H0 yes. is 0 0.15 and H1 is not equal to 0 0.15. So pi is equal to 0 0.15 and pi is not equal to 0 0.15. And where is the claim? Where is the claim? The claim is at H0, so. This is the claim. Done. That is the first step. Then let's go to step two. We are done with step one. You get your marks. Now, another one. Uh, right, define your now and your alternative. Define your now and the alternative. We have done that. So let's define the area of acceptance and the area of rejection. Spamantle. This is a what? What type of a test? A two sided one, sir. It's two sided. Right? So save time. So the area of it's negative 2.58 and positive 2.58. So we accept H0 if the Z calculated is between negative 2.58 and positive 2.58. Then we reject H0 if Z calculated is above positive 2.58 or else it's below negative 2.58. You are done with the step two. That's the decision rule. We are done with this. Then let's calculate. Right? This was step two. Then we go to step three. Step three, we are calculating. But now take a look. Take a look at this. This is no longer a Z or a T. It's a proportion. So we are using proportion. Right? So which formula do we use? We use this formula here. I'm going to put it here. Now we are going to use a proportion. Right already. So let me list my items so that it can be easy. Already my pi, my proportion, we know it's 0 0.15. What about my P? I said P it's X over N. Right, and what is your X? It's 42 out of how many people? 360, so 42 over 360. Right, I'll just round it 0 0.12. I just want to save time, right? To two decimal places, right? And what is our N? Our N is 360. So Z should be equals to your P 0 0.15 minus 0 0.12 all over the root of everything under the root sign. 0 0.12 bracket 1 minus 0 0.12 over what is your n? 360. Then you calculate. All right, so 0 0.15 minus 0 0.12, which gives you 0 0.03 over at the bottom 0 0.12 minus times 1 minus 0 0.12 divided by 360 root of, of that, I'm getting 0 0.017. Then my Z is equals to 1.752 to three decimal places, right? Then where does it lie? Does it lie above, below or between? Then you can see that 1.75, it lies somewhere here. 1.75 so it falls in the acceptance area so what's the conclusion accept h0 why do we accept because the set calculated lies between 
negative 2.58 and positive 2.58. And we have accepted H0. H0, that's where the claim is. So the claim is true. At 1% significant level, then you are done. 10 marks for free. That's it. That's how you carry out your test. Right, so basically I have done that. Now, I want everyone to listen because we are going into double. Double, that's where most people find it difficult. Right, right. So I'm going to ask you a very simple question first. Um, okay, any questions so far before I explain the double? Any questions so far or you just need more practice? Right, after today, then I'll give you more examples with solution for you to practice. So, uh, yes, just on the, the H1, H0, I forgot how you put the claim. The claim, okay, the claim is what they are claiming. Okay, look at this question. They claim that they have 15%. In other words, they are claiming that they have 15%. So if you say, Okay, let's say you claim that you have 200 rand. So Providence has 200 rand. Providence is equal to 200 rand. That's the claim. Then the opposite of that is that you don't have the 200 rand. That's why I'm putting the claim here because they are claiming that they have. If you have, it means it's equal to, you have that. In this previous example, you say that they are claiming that it takes less than Five, and this is the sign of less than. So they are saying they spent less than 45. This is the claim. That's why we write it's the claim here because it's less than. Then the opposite is greater or equal to. You put whatever has been stated in the scenario as your claim. So this statement here on H1, it's a summary of this statement. That's the claim, less than 45. That's where your claim is. And in this case, they are saying they spent. Where is it? Did I rush? OK, sorry. OK, and in this case, they claim to have 15 percent, so it's equal to 15. That's where the claim is. You see claims that that's the claim. So the opposite won't, won't be the claim. Right, the more you practice this question, the more you get it. Right, but your solutions won't show you where the claim is, but I'm always showing you. But when you get the memos from whatever, they don't tell you where the claim is, but I'm just putting it because they assume that you know which one is the claim. So may I prefer you to write it so that you know where it is. Right, okay. <clears throat> How many minutes? Your time is running. Right, okay, uh, to save time, Right, I will reserve questions at the end of the lesson. Now we are going to do what we call double. Remember that one was single, mean, and single proportion. Now we are going to deal with the double. What do we mean with double? It means you are going to have two means. You are going to have two standard deviations. You are going to have two proportions, proportion one, proportion two. That's what we mean. So your test becomes a little bit different now. Right, take a look at this. Right, let's say, I'm just going to, just an illustration. Let's say Providence has more money than Spamandla. Right, it's a statement, it's a claim. I'm saying Providence is more money than Spamandla. I didn't state how much Providence has and I didn't state how much Spamandla has. But in actual fact, if we say the money for Providence, Providence, I'm just giving an example. If Providence is 200 rand, it means Spamandla, has maybe 100 rand. 
right? So if we say providence money minus spamandlers money is going to give us 100, right? And you know providence money minus spamandlers money. If providence is more than spamandla, it means our answer between these two will always be greater than zero. That's where I want you to get it there. It's always greater than zero because if spamandla has more, if providence has more money than spamandla, providence money subtracts spamandla's money, the value will always be above zero. For example, 200 minus 100 is above zero because we get 100. So in the question, you are not going to get this money, for example. If the claim is true that providence is more money than spamandla, it means providence money minus spamandla's money will be greater than zero. Right? Then the opposite will be providence money minus spamandla's money should be less or equal to zero. That will be the alternative. Right. So in this case, whenever we have double, it is always zero at this side. It's always zero. So let me put it this way again. Right. Another item. Right. Let's say entry has same max as all this one. Right, it's an example for QT. Right, if they have same marks, this automatically means, let's say, entry, let's say, got 96%. If they have same marks, it means colleagues were also got what? 96%. So if we say they have the same marks, it means if we say marks for entry minus for Square should be equal to zero. Why? Because if you say 96 minus 96 gives us zero, if it is true. But if it is not true, it means the max for entry minus for Coley Square should not be equal to zero if it is not true. For example, she got 90, then it will be 90 minus 96 minus 90, you are now going to get 6. Is 6 equal to 0? No, it's not equal to 0. That's the whole point. Right? So whenever these things come, that they have the same marks, it means marks for this person minus for this person should be equal to 0 if they are the same. If you have the same marks, the difference between your marks is the same. It's 0. That's the whole point. Right, but if I say, right, has more marks now, it's an more marks. Remember, we're comparing two people, that's why it is double. More marks than Coley Square. Right, so it means entry max minus Coley Square's max should not be equal to zero now, isn't it? since it is more, so it will be greater than zero. For example, if she got 96 and this one got 90, then your answer you're going to see it's six, it's above zero. That's the whole point, right? So whenever you have double, mean double proportion, it is always either equal to zero, greater than zero, less than zero. You are not going to see zero point whatever. Everything now is, gauged at zero. If it is the same, it's equal to zero. If it is not the same, it's either greater than zero or less than zero. Right? Okay, let me do the last example. Then you tell me what is it. Right, the last example. Let's say we have, right, let's say, Right, spend less time studying than who else can I write than Tebuko. 
right? I'm saying Nelish spent less time studying than Tebuko, right? So if Nelish spends less time, Nelish, if we subtract Tebuko's time, you are going to get a negative number. So it will be less than zero. Why? Because Nelish may be spent four hours studying and it's less than Tebuko's time who spends five hours studying. So four minus five, you can see is negative one. It's less than zero. Right, that's how you do with double. So for you to understand it better, let's get to the questions. Then you see these scenarios I'm talking about. There is the first question. <clears throat> right, I want you to get how to do your first step first. So I'm going to do, let me see how many questions I have. One, two, yeah, we have three. I think it will be enough. Right, suppose um, the Farm Africa, a, a drug company develops a new drug designed to prevent colds. The company states that the drugs is equally effective for men and women. There, you can set your hypothesis test by just that statement only. It's equally effective for men and for women. In other words, if a man takes that drug, the rate of recovery is the same if a lady also takes that drug. So if 10 people recover for men, 10 for women will recover. So 10 minus 10, it's zero. There's no difference. You can see that. That statement alone. So let's state our OK, let me finish to test this claim. They choose a symbol, a same a symbol, random symbol of 100 women and 200 men. From a population of 100,000 volunteers at the end of the study, 38% of the women suffered a cold and 51% of the men suffered a cold. Based on the findings, can we reject the Kamban's claim that the drug is equally effective for men and women? Use 0.05 level of significance, conduct a hypothesis test. Right, so let's define our H0 and our H1. Remember from the question, there is no mean, there's no standard deviation. We are dealing with proportion, right? So we have proportion one. You can define by it proportion one to be men and you're going to have proportion two. You can define it to be women, right? So they're saying it's equally effective for men and for women. So pi one, which is men, minus pi two, which is for women, should be equal to zero. If 10 people recover for men, 10 people should recover for women. So 10 minus 10, it's zero. That's why I'm putting zero here. Then what is the opposite? If it is not true, then the recovery for men will be different with the recovery for two and will not be equal to zero. For example, nine men recovers and 10, 10 women recovers, nine minus 10 doesn't give you zero. That's why I say it's not equal to. That's the first step. Right, that's the first, first step. Any questions on that? Right, any questions on that? Please, if you have any questions, please ask. Right, that was the first step that I want you to do. Now you see we have double because we have men and women. Right, that's what I want you to see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, help me find H0 and H1 here. Right. Help me find, okay, read quickly, then quickly write your H0 and H1. Right. Read quickly, do it, find your H0 and your H1 before we go to formulas. Do that quickly. Right, then we'll solve one or two. Then once we are done, right, it's going to be a bit quite long, so just bear with me. Right, let's solve that quickly. Just give me one H0 and H1. I read through quickly. All 
I just go through. Right, just go through. Right, you really need to work on this one. Right, I think we are done. Right, let's define. It says the management of Prime Bank would like to know whether online banking is more popular among younger banking clients that's under 40 than among older bank clients. A random sample of 240 younger clients found that 125 use online banking while from a random sample of 310 older clients 140 conducted their banking online can the management of prime bank conclude at 10 percent level of significance that the younger banking clients are more likely right to use online banking than older clients right who answered that for me please anyone right we don't have it's also proportion anyone who answered on chat can you help us what was your age one yes so i'm not sure this one is a bit tricky yes i just want to know what you have done it's fine Anyone? Okay, so remember it's proportion. So we need to know what is our pi one and pi two. So pi one, right, we can call this the younger ones, isn't it? And pi two is the older clients, symbol is that. So they are saying that online banking is more popular among younger people. If it is more popular, it means younger people, they use online banking more than older people. So it means pi one minus, okay, let me just write it like this, pi one minus pi two. And remember our age zero should always have an equal sign. So it means the younger, is greater than the older, what you already know. So pi one minus pi two, if it is greater, so it means, let me put in terms of numbers so that it can be easy for you. There won't be numbers, but I'm putting numbers for illustration. Let's say in this bank, 100 young people use it and 80 older people use it. So 100 minus 80, it gives you what, 20 and 20 is greater than zero. So the younger minus the older, the answer should be greater than zero because they use more online banking. So what's the, the other, the opposite is less or equal to zero. That's it. That's your H1. The younger people use, and remember greater than is always on H1 because H0 we need less or equal to. Right, so we are testing, we need, to, can the management of Prime conclude that at 10% level, the younger clients are more likely, are more likely, it means they are greater than the older, that's it. The younger minus the older, and I have a key that I told you, Pi 1 is for the younger, Pi 2 is for the older. Pi 1 minus Pi 2 is greater than zero. We are done with the first step. I just want you to identify this. Then let's go to the next question. This one I think you can I you can try. Okay, let's try this one. Let's try this one. Let's try this one. Right, a marketing analyst, a marketing analyst collected data for weekly sales of a popular soft drinks, which are achieved from two shop display locations inside 10 supermarkets. The table below gives a calculated statistics from the two weekly sales data symbols. The column normal display gives the summary statistics for a normal show display of the column end. And the end SL display give the summary statistics measures for an end 
ISO shelf display. So that's the data. You have been appointed as the new sales manager in Kama, and you are interested in knowing whether there is statistically significant difference in the mean weekly sales for the two. Is there a difference? Right. So if you see is there a difference, is then equal or not equal to? If there is a difference, then it's not equal to. If there's a difference, it's equal to. That's what they mean there. Right. So in this case, let's write our H0 and H1. Then you define. Now we have mean, we have sample size and you have variance. It means we are dealing with what? With mu. So you need to define your mu1 and your mu2. I can say mu1 is the normal display. And mu2 is your end ISO display. So mu1 minus mu2 should be equal to zero if there is no difference. Mu1 minus mu2 should not be equal to zero then it means there is difference. This one, it means there is no difference. Right, I'm just doing an introduction, so don't worry. The next lesson, you'll be mastering it. Right, if there is no difference, it means if we sell two units on the normal display, we are also going to sell 10 units on the end ISO display. 10 minus 10, zero. Then if there is a difference, for example, we sell eight and we sell 10, the, our answer will be negative two, which is not equal to zero. Simple as that. That's what we are dealing with there. And that's the first thing that you need to do whenever you have double. Learn to identify your H1 and your H0. That's it. So I have done three examples. Okay, I've only put three examples here. This is double and double normally comes with a lot of marks. So you cannot afford to lose the double. Right, OK, now I'm going to go to the formulas. I have shown you how to calculate and I know you, you know how to do the decision rule. OK, let's go to the decision rule. This one is easy. It's the, still the same. Five point. This is step one. Right, and we go to step two. You know how to do the decision rule. There's an equal sign, so it means it is two sided. The decision rule still remains the same. Negative 1.96, positive 1.96. This is an easy mark. Then you accept your H0 if the Z calculated is between negative 1.96 and positive 1.96 and you reject h0 if z calculated is above positive 1.96 or is below negative 1.96 that's step two for this one this was easy then for this one also let's go to step two the same thing it's greater than sign, so your area of rejection is on the upper side. And the critical value, positive 1.28. So you accept H0 if Z calculated is below positive 1.28, and you reject if you reject H0 if Z calculated is above positive 1.28. Easy as that, that was step two. Then we go for this one. The same thing again, it's an equal sign, so it's two-sided. This is quite simple. The, the hardest part of this is the calculation I'll show you, right? 
Then the critical value you are given negative 2.62 and positive 2.262. So you accept now you know H0 if the Z calculated is between negative 2.262 and positive 2.262 and you reject if it is above positive 2.262 and if it is below positive 2.26 sorry negative negative 2. Point, right that's it now the difference comes in the calculations now so i'll go back to the formulas then i'll take each formula right there we go right right let's go to the formulas we are going to use these formulas now because now we have double let me make it we are going to use this formula one two and three the first formula when your sample size is greater or equal to 40 you use the Z formula, this one. And this one, when your sample size is less than 40. And this one, whenever you don't have a mean, if you don't see mean, if you don't see standard deviation, then you use proportion. If you don't see these, it means you are going to use a proportion. Right. So these formulas, as you can see, you see this S squared. It simply stands for what? S squared. And how do you calculate it? You are told this is the how you calculate it. So you calculate it on side. Then you come and you put it here. Same with this pi. You calculate it some way. Then you come and you put it here. Right. So from the question you should learn to identify. So let me just crop these questions, these formulas. Then I will ask you which formula do we use? Right. Right. I will go back. I will start with this one. Okay, let me just put it at bottom. Where is it? Okay. Right. Uh, uh, I'm just showing you the calculation first. Right. Right. So the first thing on this question, right? Look whether you are going to use Z, T, or it's going to be a proportion, right? We did step one and two. I'm not doing step number three. That's what I want you to know now, right? If you check on this question, do you have the mean? Yes, you have the variance. If you have the variance, you can look for standard deviation, right? Right, and what is your sample size? Your N is what? It's 10. So which formula are we going to use? The T formula. Right. I'm seeing somebody. I'm losing network. OK, I get you probably square if there is a network problem. Right. OK, I think you'll be able to watch the recording. Right. So we are going to use the T formula because our N is less than 40. Simple as that. Then now let's look at the T formula. I'm going to crop the T formula only, right? So that I right, don't say it's too big. It's, right, A is our T formula. Let me just erase. We are going to use the T formula. Why do we use the T formula? Because it's double, that's the first thing. So there we go. We are going to use the T formula. Why do we use the T formula? Because your N is less than 40. So you're going to use the T formula, right? So for it to be easy for you now to calculate, you need to first find the S squared. For you to find it, you need to define your two things. So remember we defined our, our mu one and mu two. Remember you can see that. So let's say normal ISO is one, normal display, right? I hope it will fit. Okay, let me just do this, this one we don't. 
Okay. I just want to put my formula here so that it will be enough for me to do the calculations. All right. Right, you have defined your now alternative and area of acceptance and area of rejection. Now you find that you have a mean and you have a standard deviation since you have a variance. So we use the T formula. Since our N is less than 40, our N is 10. Right, so we need to do what is one and what is two. Our one, we said, let's your normal V1 and your end ISO B2. So we need to find everything. We need to find what is X1, what is mu1, right? We need to find our N1, right? That's what we need to find. So let's find out that so that we can substitute here, right? So what is your X1? Your average is 50.3. What is your mu? In this case, what is your mu? From the first step, we said mu one minus mu two. It's always what? Zero. Don't forget that. Your mu is always zero whenever you do double. That's the key thing, right? Then your n is 10. Easy as that. Then we go to our two. We said our two, let it be end ISO. So what is your mean? It's 72, right? And what is your mu two? It's zero, it's always zero. We are comparing two, so it's greater, equal to zero or less than zero. And what is your N two? Your N two is 10. And what is your standard deviations? right, which is S1, you are given variance, so your standard deviation is root of 350.7. And the standard deviation two, in this case, is root of 157.3. I'm just putting a root sign. Remember, you are given variance from the first topics. So once you have all this, and remember, if we square variance, if we square standard deviation, we get variance. So let's substitute into the formula. The first thing we need to find your S squared, this one. So your S squared is given by bracket N1, which is 10 minus one bracket, multiplied by standard deviation squared gives you variance. It's going to be a bit long. Let me just write it properly. Just a long, simple calculation. So we are calculating this S squared should be equals to open bracket your N1. We have it 10 minus 1 close bracket. I'm substituting. Multiply by your standard deviation squared. If you square standard deviation to make life easy for you, I'll just do this so that you be not saying. 350.7, so it will be 18.73, so 18.73 squared, I'm squaring it, okay, then plus open bracket N1, N2, which is 10 minus 1 times standard deviation squared 157.3, which is 12, point five four then times twelve point five four squared all over n one plus n two which is ten plus ten minus two I even started calculating I'm just want to find what is s squared then I substitute it here so ten which is nine times three fifty point seven <coughs> that's nine times 157.3 divided by 10 plus 10, which is 20 minus 2, divided by 18. Then I get 254. Right? That is my S squared. Then I come to my formula. Right? Now I'm looking for T. 
t it's x1 minus x2 which is 50.3 minus 72 minus mu 1 minus mu 2 is always 0 so normally i don't write that one okay minus 0 so that people will see o over root of we have calculated the s squared 254 over 10 plus 254 over 10. Easy as that. Then you get your answer. It's just a long calculation, but it's not that difficult. So 50.3 minus 72, you get negative 21.7 over 252 divided by 10 times 2, root of that. over 7.127 then 21.7 divided by then i get negative 3.04 that's it that's the calculation All right that's the calculation easy as that so the trick thing make sure you find your s squared first your s squared is n1 minus 1 multiplied by standard deviation squared. If you square standard deviation, you get the variance. And also take note you are given the variance here. So you need to find the standard deviation. That's why I said root of variance gives you your standard deviation. Then you substitute into the formula. You get 254. The 254 now is your S squared. You now substitute into this formula now. That S squared, you substitute it, you get your answer. You are done. Right, that is for T. I like this one because that's the only the complicated question that you can get in hypothesis test with T because the calculation is long. Right, okay. Right, let me do another one. Then I'll leave you to meditate. Let's look at this one. This one, I like it because it's not T and it's not Z its proportion, right? We have find the H0, H1 and step two. Now let's go to step three and you see it has four marks and you see how easy these marks are, right? You can see in this question that we don't have the mean, you don't have the standard deviation. What is it? It's a proportion. So you go to your formulas. Okay, I'll go to the formulas, right? Now it means we have a proportion. There we go. We have a proportion P because we don't have the mean, we don't have standard deviation. Now it's a proportion. That's the formula. So let's take that formula so that we can use it. Right. So I'll go back. Which question? Oh, we did this. We are here. There we go. There is the formula. It's proportion. Why is it proportion? Did you see any mean? I'm just giving simple things to use. There is no any mean. There is no any standard deviation in this question. Then once you don't see those things, then no, you are dealing with proportion. Easy as that. Proportion. Right. So we defined, I think you still remember, that we need to find what is our one and what is our two. And we said the young bangers and the old bangers are one and two, so that we can see what is our P1, the proportion one, and our N1. So your P1, okay, let me use white color. Right, so let's start with P1. Let's start with P1. Right, okay, let me start with very simple. How many clients do we have? The young apply a random sample of 240. So we have 240. That's your N1. For older clients, we said it's N2 because we chose number two to be old. How many are your older clients? Right, 240, I found that. And sample of 310 is 310. Right? So what is your P? P1 should be equals to X over N. If you still remember, 
Right, so your P1, let's look at it. Your X, how many clients who are younger? It said they found that 125. Then we say 125 over what is your N? 240. Then for P2, how many clients? It's 140 out of 310. We are talking about older clients. I'm taking it from the question here, 140 over 310. Now we have our P1, 125 divided by 340. So I'll just round it to two decimal places, 0 0.3. Seven. I'm just rounding to two decimal places. And 140, let me say 125 divided by 240. Sorry, I made a mistake. It's 125 here over 240, which is 0 0.52. Then here, 140 divided by 340. Right, then your P2 is 0 0.41. Sir? Yes? So where did you get the 340? Wait, it's 310. Thank you, thank you. It's 310 here. Yeah. I don't know where I got that one. It's 310. It's this 310 here yeah. is also 310. Over 310. 140 divided by 310, right, which is 0 0.45. <laughs> Now we have P1 and P2. The first thing we need to look for this pi with the power. This pi with the power. Pi with the power is equals to x1. Right, I'll just write it for you. This is your x1, this is your x2, n1, and n2. Right? So x1. How many clients? It's very simple. Your X1 is 125 plus your X2 is 140 over N1, 240, N2, 310. I'm just looking for this pi with the power. 125 plus 140 divided by 240 plus 310. Then I get 0 0.48 to two decimal places. I'm done. Now I'm going to use this formula. Now let me crop it so that we can see it when I'm using it. Right, I'm just going to use this formula now. Because now we have this power, this pi with the power. We have calculated it, it's 0 0.48. It's simply x1 plus x2 over n1 plus n2, symbol is that, okay? Let's substitute, and remember, pi1 minus pi2, it's always zero. It's always zero. So your z is equals to p1, 0 0.52, minus p2, 0 0.45, close bracket, minus, I told you it's always zero there, all over, the root of your pi with the power 0 0.48 open bracket 1 minus 0 0.48 you multiply by 1 over n1 is 240 n2 is 310 close bracket so let's set is equals to i'm simplifying 0 0.52 minus 0 0.45 you get 0 0.07. Then you solve what is under the root sign, 0 0.48 times 1 minus 0 0.48 times 1 over 240 plus 1 over 310. This is 310. This one, root of of that. It's over 0 0.043, so 0 0.07 divided by that. Right, my answer 1.63. That's it. Calculated your set. 1.63.
So the key thing, find your P. Easy as that. All right, that's easy as that. So we did pro, okay. Oh, this one is proportion again. Okay, let me look for the one that is not proportion. Then we call it a day. I don't have, but I think I can create one. Okay, let me create one that is not proportion, right? Uh, or that is not T, that is Z. Then we do it from step one to step four. Right. Okay, so I'm going to create a question now. Right, I want to make sure it fits there. Right. Mm. Okay, let me... Okay, let me type it. I think it's it will save space. Right. I think it will save space. Right, let's say <coughs> MACD. Right. Claims that they spent. Oh, less time to deliver their online orders than KFC, right? To test, right, to test this claim, a survey of 60 MACD orders were conducted and it was found that they spent on average 25 minutes per order and standard deviation was 3.5 minutes. And 80 KFC orders were assembled and it was found that the average time per order was 18 minutes with a standard deviation of five minutes. Then test this claim. At 5% significant level, right? So your critical value, you let's say it's 1.96. Right, uh, I've created a question so that you'll be able to see what is happening. Right, so MACD claims that they spent less time to deliver their online orders than KFC. To test this claim, a survey of 60 MACD orders were conducted and it was found that they spend on average 25 minutes per order and standard deviation was 3.5 minutes. And 80 KFC orders were assembled and it was found that the average time per order was 18 minutes with a standard deviation of 5 minutes. Test this claim a 5% significant level. The critical value 1.96. Right, I think you can see the question. Right. right, can we see the question that I have typed? Right, okay, now let's solve this. Let's solve this question, then we call it a day. Right, I've just created so that we can be on the same page. Right, now I've created this question. Right, the first thing that we need to find out, you can see our N, our sample size is above 40. 
So we're going to use a set formula. That's the first thing, right? And you can see we have two, we are comparing two things here, right? We are comparing two items, MACD and KFC. So let's define our now alternative. This one is quite simple. Right, let's try to be a little bit quick now. So H0 and H1, right? Then you can define which one do you want your, to be your mu1 and mu2. Let me start by defining that. Right, so MACD, let it be 1, and KFC, let it be 2. So McDonald's spent less time. So what does it mean? H0 and H1. It means mu1 minus mu2 is less than 0 because they spend less time. So it means mu1 minus mu2 is greater or equal to 0. If they spend less time, that's what they are claiming. For example, if they spend less time, they will spend 10 minutes and KFC will spend maybe 12 minutes if they spend late time. So 10 minus 12 gives you negative 2, which is less than 0. That's it. They are claiming they spend less time, so we need to prove that. So we are done with this one. That is your step 1. Let's go to step 2. Define your area of acceptance and area of rejection. Right, this is lower tailed because we spent less and your critical value negative 1.96. So we are going to accept H0 if the Z is above negative 1.96 and we reject H0 if Z is below negative 1.96. That's step two. Then we go to step three. This is a Z test. Because it's above your, our sample sizes, you can see they are totally above 40. So we are going to use the Z formula. Right, so I'll just crop it for you. Right, I'll show you so that you, <coughs> it's for double. So this is your formula quite simple. This is Z and it's the one, the simplest formula, right? So what do you do? You need to find your X1. So I'm just going to write my D here. We are going to have your, your mean one and you're going to have your standard deviation one and your N1. And for KFC, we are going to also have what? We said KFC is two. So X2, standard deviation two, and N2. McDonald's, we see that our N is 60. We surveyed 60. And the standard deviation, 3.5. And your mean is 25 minutes. We go for KFC, we assembled 80 orders. So your N is 80 and the average time was 18 minutes and your standard deviation was five minutes. That's it. Once you've listed this, you put it into your formula. So your Z, X1 minus X2, 25 minus 18. Mu1 minus Mu2, there you go. Here we are. Mu1 and Mu2, it's always zero. All over the root of standard deviation one squared which is 3.5 you square it over n1 60 plus standard deviation two which is five squared over what 80 then you solve easy as that so 25 minus 18 you get seven over 3.5 squared divided by 60 plus 5 squared 
divide by 80. Then root of that, I'm getting 0 0.72. Then seven divided by R for that answer. Then I get 9.74. Right, 9.74, it's somewhere here. So I'll just write my conclusion on top there, here. Right, then the last step. So we accept H0, why? Because the Z calculated is above negative 1.96. And remember, our claim is on H1. Remember, you say they spent less time, less. There is the claim. So if we have accept H0, it means we reject H1. So the claim is false. At 5% significant level. That's it. We are done. That's it. That's it. I know it's too much. You no, know it's too much, but we still have another lesson. So on another lesson, I'm not going to give you an activity for now. I'm going to give you these questions with solutions. Practice them, practice them. Practice them until you master what is going on. Then I'm going to give you a bit tough questions so that you stretch your mind. For now, learn to identify your now and alternative. Then you do the test and just learn to identify which formula to use and learn how to use your calculator, that's all. Don't expect miracles, no practice, no scores, no pain, no gain, that's a simple principle. The more you practice and don't expect if you do these three questions, you are good. Go to your textbook, do a lot of them, do those questions I post on my LMS, do them, practice them, don't copy, practice, close your answers, Mark yourself. If you don't understand, consult. My WhatsApp is open 24-7. Just ask. If I have time, I will respond. Right. Okay, let me download the register. Right, any other questions? I know we are tired. It's fine. Go and meditate on this work. Once you master it. So now what I'll do, I'll prepare questions with solutions then I'll post them on WhatsApp group in my LMS, then you go through them. Don't forget confidence intervals as well. And don't forget single mean. So tomorrow in the tutorial, you are going to do hypothesis test for single mean and single proportion, right? So make sure you practice more, right? If you have questions, you can ask. If you don't have any questions, thank you for joining. I will see you on the next class.